Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm going to do my weekly reading update for the first time in like two months because <laughs> I've been doing vlogging for uh, July 7th, 2024. So um, this week was definitely a slowdown of my reading compared to the Amazing Readathon, which was nice. I still read and got through quite a few things. I'm actually pretty excited about finishing a few or er, finishing one series and then um, continuing in a few others. And then I also started my Jane Austen July reading. So um, this week as a, the, the, we only, I only had to work three days, the July 1st, 2nd and 3rd. And they were really quiet days because a lot of people took vacation and our construction crew wasn't really working. So there was a lot of stuff that was, it was really quiet, <laughs> even, you know, where I work. So um, I, um, I just, you know, I did what I had to do, but I was so glad to leave. I left a little early on Wednesday because um, no one was doing overtime because we had Thursday and Friday as our vacation. Or we had our holiday pay and then our floater. So we didn't, you know, get any overtime this week. So I, um, but I, my tire of my car light went off again. I think I talked about that in my, one of my vlogs when I went to see my parents, the tire pressure had gone off and all my tires had been low. Well, it turns out one of them actually that I'd had a bolt put through it a couple of years ago. It had been plugged, but the plug was coming undone. So, um, yesterday morning, um, I had other things I wanted to do, but I had to go take my car in to get the tire fixed. So I did get that done. So hopefully the tires can last a little bit longer. Everybody says I have enough tread for at least another year. So I'm hoping we're okay. Cause I almost had to buy a set of tires yesterday and that would have hurt me. I mean, I would have done it. Like I have money for that. It's just, I was hoping again to put it off for another year. So anyway, right. um, but, um, the holiday was really nice here. The problem is we're in a heat wave and, um, luckily again, I ha I bought an air, uh, air conditioner for my upstairs bedroom. So at least I can sleep at night, but my downstairs is too open. Um, or the area, you know, my kitchen, dining room and living room are too open to get a unit that would really work for the area. So, um, I <laughs> just kind of melt <laughs> by the end of the night. Um, but the house keeps pretty cool most during the day, except for today, because we've had a couple days in a row of the heat and, um, I'm, I just did the dishes and I'm like sweating. So <laughs> I'm not sure how this Sunday is going to go. We'll see. I mean, I have fans going, uh, down here, but Oh, anyway, I hate the heat. And that's something I definitely don't miss from Sacramento was the heat. And uh, this heat's a uh, slightly different, but it's still, it's just, I'm an Oregonian. I just don't like the heat and I never will. I'm a Northern Oregonian and I just, no, never. Anyway, so let's talk about uh, what I read this week, what I think I'm going to, what I'm in the middle of and what I think I'm going to read in the next week. Man, I've forgotten my thing that I did for years. Anyway. Oh, and there's Cooper, who is upset that he can't lay on me because he's a hot fur ball and he doesn't understand that I don't want him on me. <laughs> Just doesn't get it because he's a cuddler. Anyway, um, so the first thing I read was, oh, the, the, the name of this short story um, or novella is The Last of the Iron Drood series, uh, Chronicle of the Iron Drood Chronicles by Kevin Hearn. It was one of the Oberon Meaty Mysteries. It's in the collection of canines and cocktails. Um, again, a um, couple of his uh, novellas are with, uh, in groups of, um, are with other novellas by um, uh, Delilah S. J Dons Dawson and um, Chuck Wendig. I just don't ever read those because they're not in series that I'm paying attention to. I just read the Oberon mystery, which has the weirdest name. So I don't think I'm going to be able to read this. It says the Chartreuse Chanteuse, something like that. It's, um, <laughs> it was the very last of the Oberon mysteries, meaty mysteries that is out the last in the Iron Drood main series. So I have completed the Iron Drood series by Kevin Hearn. I am really happy that I focused on that this year. I know last year is when I started it or restarted it in order to get through it. And then this year I've just been you know, plugging away at it here and there. And I got a couple things done in June, but the very last uh, novella I couldn't attach to anything at the time. Um, I could, you know, I just 
I waited, I guess, until the first of, first or second of July. I think I listened to that on audio by Luke Daniels, which does a who. If you like audiobooks, he does a great. He is a great narrator for the whole Iron Jude series, and highly recommend him for that. Um, I um I'm so I'm so glad I got that done. I am looking into other series by Kevin Hearn. I do have the first book in the when he does with Delilah S. Dawson about kill the farm boy. So I that's looks like that's a hilarious fantasy. I'm not sure um <laughs> how I feel about that one, but I do want to try I have the first book of that one. I have the what's the first one of his? Is it a plague? A Plague of Giants. So I think it's the Seven Kennings uh, series, which is epic fantasy. So um, I think the third book came out earlier this year. So I have the first two that I've gotten as remander copies from um, Pals. So I have copies of them. I haven't started that series, but those are pretty chunky. But I do want to try that. But I also might go into um, Ink and Sigil, which is part of the... Um, Iron um, Druid Chronicles, but I don't know how it connects. It has to do with somebody who uses tattoos and magic. I think there's three books in that series. So I might be getting the first book of that one at some point. I don't know who does the audio for that. If it's Luke Daniels, I'm probably going to get it on audio or uh, get it from my library or something. I don't know. So anyway, so I am going to continue with Kevin Hearn at some point. I have, as I said, I have other books of his. But I'm going to take a little break because the Iron Druid series was something I have read a book or two from all all year. And I, again, I really enjoyed the series. This one was not my favorite. The, the Last Meaty Mysteries, I just, I didn't like, um, to me, it seemed a little bit more extraneous than some of the other novellas and short stories that I've read about this series. So it wasn't one of my favorites. Um, it kind of went out with, I mean, I was kind of surprised at how it ended, but also, eh, I'm okay with it. You know, it's not, as I said, he took this series in a, in a way I didn't expect in the end. So, you know, I mean, kudos to him. I just, I don't know. That was interesting. Anyway, so then I decided to do some rereading and I read the first in the deadly, the dr delightfully deadly series of novellas. Uh, this is Poison or Protect, which is following, um, Prisha and um, she, these are, this, this series is, I think it's 20 or, you know, so many years after the Finishing School series by Gail Carriger, which is a young adult uh, series about some young women who are sent to school on this dirigible, this huge dirigible, where they are a floating school, and they are learning to, in, in, instead of just learning to do all this stuff uh, for being in uh, public, you know, being uh, going to balls and things like that. They also are are trained to be assassins and and spy masters and things like that. So it's just kind of fun. It's a fun series. I do um, enjoy Gail Carriger quite a bit. And um, these I've I read this um, quite a, a couple of years ago. I think I don't remember when this one came out, but um, oh, this one was 2016. So this came out quite a while ago. So I know I read this, oh, you know, closer to when it came out. And this is following one of the characters that's not very likable through the series, but I think this kind of re redeems her. Like I liked, um, I mean, there's reasons for, she just wasn't part of the main group, the main core four that were, that we followed through the finishing school. She was always one of the, <laughs> the kind of rivals, like on the side. I, I just, I liked the way hers went. I, I got to, I liked her a lot more after this book. And again, this is her love story. And uh, there she is, goes to a house party to, uh, one is to stop um, a young man from uh, trying to get too close to the Duke's daughter, as well as there to make sure the Duke doesn't get killed because people are out to get him for his uh, political views. And another character, Gavin, is also sent there um, by a different um, person, uh, another <laughs> of the of the powers to, that be in in the in England. And they uh, it's a steampunk, and this one's. Like mid, like in I think it was in the 1860s. So it's steampunk, Victorian, alternate history. I'm pretty sure, yeah, 1867. So again, lots of fun. I loved enjoy going back to that because I couldn't remember it, and I liked it because of just reading reticence. There's a character that relates back to this, so it was really great. I I just I really enjoyed her world built her worlds, how all the series kind of connect, which is why I'm trying to finish everything because I'm never. 
haven't got that far. Um, and then I, um, oh, did I finish that first? No, I didn't. I finished another one first. Sorry. I did um, continue the Shifters Unbound series with the last of the novellas I had between book seven and eight. So book 7.75 7 is Wild Things. And this follows the brother of the one who was in Bad Wolf, which was a 7.5. And I, I wasn't sure how I was going to like this one, but it's this one has kind of a psychic element too. Again, this is uh, Shifters Unbound is a series where... Um, the um, super the shifters came out twenty years before, and they were put into um, into parts of towns like there's a Austin shifter town, and there's one out in Las Vegas, and another one in North Carolina. And we're following uh, the shifters who are there and the humans who come into contact with them, and um, their reasoning for letting themselves be put into the towns and and then them trying to kind of rebel and stuff. And so this one is one of the shifters that we met in one of the other novellas, I think 6.5 is going, um, feral. And so it's, a, it's, he's losing his, uh, reality. And so, um, he attacks some of the family members who are watching out are watching him, not his family members, but this family Tate has taken him and his uh, mate in and they are trying to, um, to help him. And Mason is injured. And then he goes to look for, um, supposedly the psychic who might be able to help them find a shifter healer. So this was kind of a different one because um, it was another section to the world we didn't, I didn't know about. I, I think it's really interesting how this series, you could read all the main novels and be fine, but the novellas just expand the world and uh, talks about characters who are minor characters in the novels, but gives them their story. Because Mason was very, not a character that I knew anything about, except that he was the brother of one of the one of the more major minor characters, if that makes sense. And I liked his story and his uh, psychic uh, <laughs> uh, connection or, you know, who he got with. So I can't remember her name though. That's so bad. I don't remember her name, but anyway. So I now can continue to book eight in the Shifters Unbound, which I think is White Wolf. I think so. So anyway, um, that one also kind of relates to a lot of these novellas and things he's been talked about in the background. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, hopefully later this month or next month. We'll see. Um, and then I did my buddy read with Burner at Burner's Book of Adventures and finished Vampire Mine by Carolyn Sparks. This is book 10. Is that right? I think it's 10 in the uh, Love at Stake series. So um, this was our <laughs> probably our least favorite book of this. There's There was another book that probably wasn't as fun either. But this one, um, these two, got, two people were just always just nothing. They were kind of depressive, actually. And I didn't, this, this expanded the world. So it was kind of interesting because we found out that angels and demons exist so I wasn't expecting that in this paranormal romance because we have been talking about vampires but you know shifters had come in and now we have angels and demons she's really throwing everything <laughs> at this series um so we meet Mariel who um is found after she is pretty much expelled from heaven due to not um following orders and Connor is one of the vampires who has been kind of <laughs> kind of grumpy the whole series because everybody's falling in love with someone and he doesn't believe in that or he doesn't think that that's right because he has a lot of uh trauma and stuff in his background and he lets that kind of dictate how he feels about things anyway and um <sighs> I like the way that this is for the overarching story the things we got from all the characters uh, something happened early in the book that relates to characters who have been the main characters throughout the or been then main characters in the beginning who we've seen throughout and something bad happened and it was just a shock that that happened in this book. I was not expecting it. So there were good things in here and the world building, um, their big fight scene in here was one of the best of the series. That part I really liked, but really what really pulled this down for, uh, you know, for me was the, was the couple. They just, I didn't, they didn't do anything for me. I mean, I glad I liked the way it went in the end, you know, with their AGA. But I just, it was not a favorite. I'm really looking forward to the next one to be better. It wasn't my favorite. So I did listen to this one on audio by Gabra Zachman. And I mean that, she was okay too. Um, it wasn't nothing to do with her. It was, it was just, the characters were just, it's, and, and the angel was a little too naive for me. Anyway, my own personal opinion. 
And then um, the last one I have finished was uh, Defy or Defend, which is book two of the Delightfully Deadly series. So again, this is following another of the girls from um, the Finishing School series. Now this is, again, 20 years later. And um, I think this is, I don't remember if this gives a date too. This is 69. So this is a couple years after the other one. Oh my gosh, I just love this one. I loved it when I read it, back, you know, a couple of years ago when it came out. I love Dimity and, um, that is Dimity. Yeah, Dimity. It's because she's the best friend of the main character in the Finishing School series. I've always loved her. And I just like the way that this goes in her, um, handler and her are sent, uh, Sir Crispin, they're sent to, um, this uh vampire hive again this is again victorian uh steampunk vampires with shape shifters anyway it should she uh <laughs> um is sent in to find out why the queen has stopped is, is not living in the hive house she is now living down in a cave below um the hive house in Nottingham and uh they go in and try to figure out what has happened there's there there's only one um, drone or, or Calaver, no, yeah, drone or somebody who's watching out for them. And there's three uh, older vampires who are kind of in their goth velvet stage. It was just so funny. I love this book. The lo the romance is really good. These two have been kind of working together for years, but they keep, um, they, he tries to keep a distance because he doesn't want to be like his, his, um, his father who was not uh, very very good to other women and so and she has been trying to get him to open up a little bit more to her and, and see her as herself and not just as her her uh you know agent persona kind of thing so it was just a cute uh, story i really enjoyed this one to revisit it and now i only have one more which i'll talk about in a minute so i i'm really close to finishing all of the parasol protectorate universe books. Uh, one more. One more. Anyway, so that is all I finished. So what I'm in the middle of is, um, actually, let's talk about, oh, what am I in the middle of? Okay, so the major thing is for Jane Austen July, I have decided to do the annotated Pride and Prejudice this year. These are edited, annotated and edited by David M. Shepard. So um, I bought all of these last year or the year before. And I, um, I was planning to read it last year, but I just, I just didn't make the time for it. Um, because the audio is just so good. I had the one by Rosamund Pike who played Jane in, uh, uh, or Jane Bennett, you know, in, uh, the, uh, Pride and Prejudice 2005 version. So, um, so I have that. So I, um, what I decided to do is it's been a long time since I physically read, um, Pride and Prejudice because after I got that audiobook, every year I've been pretty much just listening to it on audio, usually binging it in a day or two at the most, you know, cause I just adore, this is my favorite book of all time. And I have studied it in college. I did, there's a lot of stuff with this. So, but I wanted to read this annotated version. So at least read one of them because <laughs> I have all of them. I just wanted the whole set after I got this one anyway, but, um, I want to at least read one <laughs> for now. So, um, what I'm doing is I listen to a chapter and, um, so one side of all these is the actual text and then the other side Oh, hold on. I'm in the introduction. That's what you can't tell. Okay. So here it is the like chapter nine. There's just all the text of the first page. And then it has footnotes that are all on the side here. So the, so the book is half of it is the novel and the other half is all the notes. So it is very extensive. So I listen to a chapter. I read along with the chapter. And then once I finish the chapter, I then go back and I go through and read all the notes. So I'm kind of, it's kind of like a two- thing. And so it takes me quite a bit of time. I started out reading 25 pages a day, you know, approximately just mounting where the chapters ended. So it was two or three chapters, um, every day. And I did that every day until yesterday. And yesterday I could not put it down. I read my pages and then I'm just like, I need more. And so I read, so, so now I am halfway there. Um, I'm halfway through the audiobook, so I'm halfway through the actual novel. The notes look like I might be a little bit <coughs> sorry. 
<coughs> wow, that just came out of nowhere. Sorry. Um, the notes look like I have, I'm over half, but I think it's because there's an introduction in the beginning and which I didn't read. I, mean, I just don't like introductions. I just, I don't. I sometimes read them at the end after I finished a uh, classic, but most of the time I just find it that they, again, again, and that is one thing I'm having with this. I am so loving the reread because I'm actually physically reading it while like the immersion read. I don't do that quite so often. There's another book I'm also doing that with. Um, but I just didn't realize how much that, that made the experience of this so much better than it, I have in a little bit. And I think it's because I just, I've been reading it audio so fast every year just to experience it, but I wasn't taking my time with it. And so this has been a really good experience because I'm seeing the text again and seeing the, you know, the, the actual minute differences um, that, um, you know, the movies and the, t you know, and the mini series and stuff that I really love that they're different, you know, kind of thing. And I just, there was a line in here I found yesterday that I had never seen before. Like, I don't even remember hearing it, which I might go back on the audiobook to see if it's like, if it's actually said and I just have never caught it, but it was such a huge deal for something about Wickham that I never caught. It was just, it was really interesting. Anyway, it was like one of those things. So there has been really good things about this annotated version. The other thing is, is that there's a lot of just miscellaneous stuff that's just talking about certain things in that time period. It's very interesting to, uh, talking about the furniture and how the rooms were set out or how the dinner, there's like, you know, courses of meals and stuff when you had, you know, when someone was really rich and what they could do, uh, like Lady and Catherine de Berg. So I just, there are so many good things in here, but there's also a few times where he kind of explains what's happening in the scene, like, like, uh, what Elizabeth or Darcy is probably thinking, like not, not quite to exact, like for sure, but I don't know. There's sometimes it's, it's like, it's the, it is his annotations and his thoughts on it. So there's sometimes where I, I don't agree fully with what he says. Like I go, well, yeah, I could see where you're saying, but we don't know what Jane Austen actually meant. Like, again, it's, I've always had that trouble with literary criticism and, and looking at books, um, that way in some of my classes in college, again, I was an, uh, an English major or English, I have a bachelor in English. And I read a lot of stuff and I read a lot of Jane Austen at the time because that was what my focus was. But I read a lot of other things, you know, and they would say things. And again, I always had that problem with, you know, the reason why the curtains are blue is because, you know, the, the author was depressed and blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, no, the curtains were just blue. You know, I've always had trouble with some of the looking for themes where there might not be. Some of them in here, like he's had some insights that I'm like, oh, I, I didn't look at it that way. I don't know if I agree, but that was interesting. But there's some of them I'm like, eh, I don't know if I agree with that one. Like, I don't, that's not the way I read it. Um, so again, it has to do with my own perceptions. So it's interesting to see somebody else's take on it because I have not studied this since college. I mean, I had a professor who was very much into Pride and Prejudice or into uh, Jane Austen. That was his focus. And he taught a lot of classes that had to do with, with the Regency period. And he had his own versions of certain things. So it's his, because we did not connect very well. I mean, he was my advisor for at the end, but we did, we, we saw Emma in very different ways. <laughs> it was really, it was one of those things. But anyway, I am really enjoying this. I, as I said, I'm ha halfway, I'm halfway through the novel. And I think I'm half, I mean, over halfway it shows in the book, but Anyway, so I have about 344 pages. So half of that is the novel and half is, um, you know, the annotations and pictures. This, I mean, it really is nice. They have pictures of things, you know, and uh, and they describe things, you know, just to tell you what people, it's, it, I, I think it really is an interesting read. You just have, to, I think you have to go into it knowing that not everything is worthwhile. Like it's not worth all. <laughs> reading everything but I'm doing it for this read I'm gonna read the whole thing um just to get it all at least do one of these like this maybe in the future I will look at the other uh annotated versions I have and just kind of pick and choose where I want to read which <laughs> which things I'm not sure anyway so this kind of came on my obsession yesterday I didn't want to go to bed because I was I just got to um <clears throat> the Kent scene and um 
the letter and other things, you know, like things happen. And I'm like, I don't want to go to bed, but I have to, I'm too tired. My eyes are just, I couldn't, I couldn't hold them open anymore. So today my goal is to make a really good progress in this and just continue because this is what's calling to me. Now, if I don't finish this today, which again, I don't really think I will. I think I'll get a good, you know, I might get a hundred or two done, you know, this afternoon and evening because I don't have any plans and I'm trying to stay out of the heat. So um, I might get really good progress in this, um, but uh, I just, I want to finish it because I want to watch the movies and the miniseries and even uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies because I didn't get to re watch that last year when I got it. So um, I am, so again, I <laughs> I didn't mention this, but I am doing this all for Jane Austen July because every July I pretty much read some Jane Austen and some books that are related to her time period. And I am... Again, I'm really enjoying this, even though sometimes I think some of the notes are extraneous or I don't agree. But I think it's really an interesting look at it. And again, I haven't studied Pride and Prejudice for many years. I've just let myself be entertained. But it is my favorite book of all time. And I do um, like that I've gone back and I'm now doing more or, you know, like reading something like this that has a lot of notes of stuff that um, I, I, you know, I, I didn't think about or I didn't look at it that way. I don't think it's interesting. I don't think he's changing my mind on a lot of things, but it's more just like more expanding the world or understanding that time period a little bit better. And as I said, I just, I, that, this one line that was mentioned in the letter that I never caught before, I'm still stunned. Like that, yesterday, I was just blew my mind, which I forgot. I was going to go back and look at my other version of Prime Price and make sure it's in there. So it's not like I just skipped it because I have my version from college or high school high school. And I just, I don't, I want to make sure that line is in there because I'm just like, where did I never see this line? Anyway, sorry. Um, so then real quick, I'll just talk about the stuff that I'm in the other stuff I'm in the middle of, but again, I'm positive because I'm into that. I did start Dreadful Company by Vivian Shaw. This is book two in the Greta, Dr. Greta Helsing, uh, series. This is an urban fantasy series following, uh, Greta Helsing, who is a doctor of the undead. And she is, um, the first book was just a lot of fun. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. It takes place in London. This one takes place in Paris. She is there for a conference and, uh, things are going wrong pretty quickly. Little weird creatures are showing up everywhere. And again, this is a world where the humans, the normal people don't know about the other characters or the other, uh, the undead and everything like that. And she's friends with some of the vampires like Varney the Vampire and uh, Ruthven, who is from The Vampire by um, Polidori um, story. And it's just, <laughs> it, it's all twisted to differently. They're not the same, but it's so, it's just interesting. And again, it's modern day. So I, I keep, it throws me out every time. <laughs> I always think it's going to be historical and it's not, but it's funny. Anyway, I just started, I got about 40 pages in um, when I read a little bit on Friday and then uh, Saturday morning when I was getting my tire fixed, but I put it down because I got into Pride and Prejudice and then I did not stop. So the other book that I'm in the middle of is The Way of Kings. So I did make some progress in Brandon Sanderson's first book in the Stormlight Archive. I am now third, 20, is it 25 pages? I think I'm 25 pages from the end. Oh yeah, 25 pages of the end of the first section. And then I have the 500 pages of the last section. So of the, of this book. So what I'm finding is, um, I also do this as an immersion read because, um, I just, that just seems to be working for this one. So I was hoping to do a little bit every day, but then yesterday Pride and Prejudice just took over and I'm like, well, you know, that's going to be my priority. So this, this, during this next week, I'm hoping that when I get home at night, I will at least spend an hour every day. Cause I think I have 12 hours left of the audiobook at the speed that I'm listening to it at. So I'm hoping that after I get done with Pride and Prejudice, because that is my main focus, that I will, when I get home from work, I will um, give my make myself do an hour every day of listening to it. So I just can get this done. I do not think this is bad in any way. This is not a story that I think um, 
I don't want to know the answers to. I do like the characters. I like the world. I think my problem is, is that this really does feel like a first book in a series and there's just so much stuff being thrown at us. And I'm also feeling like, I mean, there's action, but it's just, I feel like it's few and far between um, in some things, but I also feel like it's building for the rest of the books. And because I know that there are four books after this that are massive and two novellas that I need to read, it's just, it, I, I've been putting this off. So my goal this next week, this is going to be my priority at home when I get home from work to at least read, a, you know, read an hour or so. And I mean, again, it'll take me over this week, but unless I get into it and I finally just <laughs> blow it out. But at this point, it's still, it's, I'm still trying to struggle. So anyway, so that's going to be my other priority. And then, um, if I get time after that, I might uh, start, um, well, I did start, but come back to, because I did, again, I read a lot of stuff on Friday, and then I switched over to Pride and Prejudice and just stopped. So this is the illustrated edition, or letters of, the illustrated letters of Jane Austen, which is selected and introduced by Penelope Hughes Hallett. So this is a really pretty book. I, I really think it's really pretty. It has her letters, and then it has Oh, you know, more data and stuff, a lot of picture. It's really a pretty, a pretty book. Editing is horrific. I'm going to be honest. The first uh, couple pages, I was just stunned at how bad the editing was in here. At one point, they called uh, Tom LaFoy, um, Tam, Tam LaFoy. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and there was, uh, there was another one that was pretty bad. <laughs> I can't remember now. I blocked it out of my head. Um, so... Oh, many. Okay. Instead of Mary, like M-A-R-R-Y, like she was talking about some of her relatives who married certain people. Um, it is put in as many, M-A-N-Y. It was, okay, as, as I mentioned, I have a bachelor in English and I write for fun, but not so much right now, but I'm going to get back into it. I bought a new computer. That's the only thing I had to do this week. Um, so I'm hoping to get back into it. But, uh, but I, my editing brain hurts for this one because the editing is so, is a lot worse than I thought it was. Now I have this one and I have the Bronte sisters ones, which I hope to read, um, for October this year. So I don't know, I don't know if I can uh, recommend these yet. I think they're pretty, but right now editing is driving me crazy. Anyway, and again, I think it must be a small press cause it's Batsford and I don't know, I don't know that one. But um, their editing sucks. Anyway, so I hope to get to that because, again, that's for Jane Austen Jai to read something other than one of her main six novels. And I also um, want to finish the Delightfully Deadly series with the very last book, Ambush or Adore. And this, again, is one I have not read. And it just came out, or it came out, sorry, in 2000. I've held this. 2000. 21 and the reason I, I held it because I hadn't finished the custard protocol and this comes after that So now that I've finished all the other books and now I've done my reread of the first two books just to because I because I like them So now I'm gonna read this one. So I'm hoping later this week as, Or you know after I you know after I finish dreadful company for sure um, Then I will read that one and finish that off. So that is it. Um <laughs> Yeah, it, I talked a lot about Jane Austen. So Jane Austen July, again, for me, is going really well. Um, it usually does. Like, I usually have fun. I have some other books I'm going to get to later in the month. So I'm kind of excited about that, but I'm trying to split it up. So that's why I was hoping to get to the May of the Letters this next week if I finish the Pride and Prejudice. Because, again, I was going to read Pride and Prejudice all month, but I just can't do it. I just need to <laughs> I just need to read it all. So well, hopefully I'll get a lot of that done today. Um, as I said, I did get a new computer back in May when it went on sale, but I hadn't, June was just not a month for me to sit down and uh, play with that. So I did do that on, um, the, on the, on the fifth and I did do that. So, um, that, so I'm going to be, I have my laptop now, so I, I'm hoping I'm going to start integrating writing again into my, uh, into, um, what I do during the week. We'll see what happens. It's been a long time and I really want to get back into it. I, I really miss it. But again, I got the new computers here. Um, and I put that together or got it set up and everything. So, um, I think that's everything. I still have other things that I need to do, but you know, I don't think I, I can't think of anything else right now. Um, this next week I will be putting up my 
mid-year book freakout tag, as well as I think a mid-year goals check-in video. And then, um, yeah, so I think that's it for now. So anyway, um, what are you guys reading? What is, have you guys been participating in Jane Austen July? Um, have you read any of these annotated versions? As I said, I, I like them, but I don't love them. Like I said, it's, um, I'm more enjoying the immersion reading with, um, Pride and Prejudice than I am the actual, you know, the notes and stuff, but I do want to get through that. So we will see. So anyway, and, and I finished the series. The Iron Druid series, Druid, uh, Chronicles is done and I'm almost done with the Parasol Protectorate world. So, so close. I'm doing good, right? Anyway, I will talk to you guys later. Bye. And Cooper.